Speaking of Reese Johnson in a kind of weird way, uh, the season kind of started off on a rough foot last year when Jared Spurgeon, the captain, got hurt last preseason game. That made a big impact on penalty kill, made a big impact on defense. They had pushed favor. If favor didn't have that year, he had been an even worse season. So uh, I know you sat down with Jared Spurgeon recently, an interesting, fascinating interview with him and his wife. And just one of the biggest things you learned, uh, most fun things you learned too from that. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm smiling, Joe. And and I don't know when this pod is coming out, so I don't I hesitant to scoop myself, but I got a big Spurgeon <laughs> story coming out in Thursday's Athletic. Mm-hmm. And one of the most hilarious things his wife told me is that so, and this just shows you what a great captain that Jared Spurgeon is and what a great captain's wife, Danny Spurgeon, is. Like they do this stuff all the time, and we never usually hear about it. Last week, they wanted to get all the two-way guys out of the hotel because they're going to be in a hotel for a month. So they invited, they invite, they made it an open invitation where some actual NHL guys did come as well. But you know, it's it's before the season. They got kids, families. A lot of them didn't come. But all the two-way players, the minor league guys, the guys expected to be in Iowa, the prospects came to their house for dinner. They were told to be there at four o'clock. And at the end of the night, when they were all left, Danny Spurgeon goes to Jared. You know how I really loved Reese Johnson and his wife. And Jared's like, you know, that's the guy that hurt me in trading camp last year. And Danny had no clue. Uh, and I just thought that was hilarious uh, because that is the person that hurt his shoulder and he missed the first month of the season. Um, but it, it's it's just I, I think it says this is the type of stuff that kind of drives me. I get it, but it kind of drives me nuts when fans are like, you know, why don't they put the C on Kaprizov? Give it to this guy, that guy. Like Spurgeon's the captain of this team. He does a lot of stuff that we do not see. There's no reason. This is not an. I, it, this is not a Toronto situation where it was just time for Tavares to give it up and give it to the 70 goal scorer in Austin Matthews. Jared Spurgeon should be the captain of this team. He is the captain of this team. Let's see what he does this year. And, and to your point, Joe, I think we all just because maybe he was, he missed so much time last year and it happened before camp started where he had his first injury, even though it technically was unrelated to the other injuries that cost him the season. We all take for granted of what a huge loss that was for this team. And look, you know, he's he, he's obviously not the same player he once was at 34 years old that he was when he made his NHL debut on his 21st birthday. But this is a great hockey player that uh, his impact was felt last year from an even strength standpoint, a power play standpoint, and obviously a penalty kill standpoint. Now, there were some bright spots because of it. Like me, we might not have seen Brock Faber excel to the point that we all knew that he could be if Jared Spurgeon is in the lineup. Um, But, but, you know, now that Jared's back, it gets Jake Middleton with somebody that he's much more comfortable with and plays better with. And then obviously you got Brodeen and Faber together. So I think it's a huge return. Um, I talked to Spurge, as he said the other day, he is feeling a hundred percent. Obviously you don't know until you know, um, but he is feeling great right now. And so, you know, him being back, Felino being back and all the other guys, you know, the Goudreaux, the Zuccarellos that had, you know, uh, that were nicked up for a lot of the year, just to have them healthy is going to be big for this team.